Hello everybody and welcome once again to another episode broadcast, if you will, of Game Guru Max live uh, broadcast number 67 of all the numbers. 67 is the one for this week. And boy, do I have something to show you. But before I show you or speak much further, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me fine, loud and clear. I keep playing with my speakers and microphones and I never really know when I'm going to break it. So I just want to make sure that I haven't broke it and everyone can hear me just fine. So I have a chat window that you can't see, but I can see. And I want to make sure that the load and noises from my mouth are actually being transmitted on the air. Thank you very much, Preben. Everyone can hear me. Great. Let's move straight on, shall we? So I'm going to run the software because what I want to show you is inside the software. But before that, let me tell you a little story. Many moons ago, let's call it seven years ago, um, the Wing Game Guru Classic first made its appearance on Steam. Some of the critique, and there was much, some of the critiques said it's just a uh, Game Guru is just a glorified level editor. All you can really do is create one level of one game and that's it. And anything you had to do beyond that involved dark magic. So the idea of using wind zones with uh, if used fields in them and then going into lower scripting in order to customize your title screens and stuff like that. And I think it was for critique. Um, and so in Game Guru Max, we've done something about it. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce to you the brand new Game Project Storyboard System. Now, anyone who's been using Game Guru for a couple of months, years, um, we'll know exactly what this is. This allows anyone to create their entire game, not just a level, the entire game. That is the splash screen when you first run your executable, the title screen, the instructions for the game screen, the game win screen, the lose screen, your multiple levels connected in a linear or non-linear fashion, and it's all done using this really cool... Um, Organizer. Let's call it an organizer for now. But it basically, its official title for what we're going to use as terminology is the Game Project Storyboard. So how does it work? Well, let me sh go through and create a really simple uh, standalone executable, and you'll get the idea very quickly. So you've got your splash screen. As I said, that shows up when you first um, run your game that you export. I'm just going to pick a zombie theme. So I'm just going to pick this guy. And as you can see, it's still using all of our standard browsers. So we've got a loading screen here. Now, this is a cool one, title screen. Not only can you pick your backdrop, which we'll do now. So we'll pick that one. You also get to customize all the aspects of this particular screen. So you've got start, about, and quick game buttons, which the user, when they run your game, they get to choose one of these three buttons. But you get to customize them. For example, I could say, move them over here. Let's say I want to be very specific. I could have a grid. Uh, let's see the grid, so something like this. Let's say I lock it in here, like there and there. Um, let's say I modify the start a little bit. So let's say instead of a boat, I can have instructions. So those are the instructions for my game. And I want a different font, so I can choose different fonts for my buttons, like so. I maybe want the start button to be bigger. So I can make that one bigger, so I'll give the user indicator that's the button to go for. And I can give it a sound as well, so you see we're in the sound browser. I'll probably pick something from the miscellaneous. Yeah, that sounds good, we'll have that one. And just to make sure we've got consistency, we'll have that same sound effect for all three buttons. Now I'm not going to be an exhaustive, I'm not going to sit here for two hours creating um, all my game screens, but you get the idea. So this is my title screen that I'm pretty happy with. Let's say I want some music as well. I can select uh, what music shall I play. Let's go to Cellar, Atmos. It's a nice little music thing. Let's choose that one. So there you go. That's a very simple way. Um, 
uh, a simple demonstration of how to create your own backdrop titles, uh, splash screen and title screen, the buttons, you can customize the buttons. You notice there's other things here, I've not gone into it, but you can actually even change the graphics of the buttons themselves, whether the de-highlighted, uh, selected or, or just highlighted but not selected, so you can choose the images, you don't even need the text if you don't want, you can just use your own images, but you get the idea. And when you come back out, Notice what it did, it grabbed that layout and now that's the thumbnail for that particular screen. We'll blast through these others really quick, so all I'll really do for this one is just give it a better backdrop, zombie themed backdrop. This is our about screen again, we'll give it a, a zombie theme, maybe do some instructions like your mission is to stay alive and run away from zombies. Obviously, you'll come up with a better plot for your game. Um, and just so we can finish up this top level, let's just, again, let's have a different one this time. Move this down here, make it really big. As you can see, that change has been influenced in the thing. Move that one down. So you can have a lot of fun just creating your screens. Now, now we've done that, um, I am going to create a level. Now, all these were screens. These are screens with buttons and mouse pointers and stuff like that. This one is where you actually create your level. Now, you've probably already guessed that you can actually have more than one level, but for now, if I edit the level, see what the logic is now? It's going into the terrain generator. Now you get to select what kind of um, level you want to start with. So I'm going to go for the rocky theme. I'm not going to dwell on this. We demonstrated this in a previous broadcast. So as we can now say, this is the, the mountain trap. You can give your level a name, a proper name, not just a number. And there we go. We've actually got a level. And like I said, if we wanted to create a new level, we can just click that button there. Now we've got a level number two. And what are these arrows I hear you say? Well, if you win the game, you go to this one. And if you win the lose the game, you go to this one. But what you could actually do is connect that to that and connect that to that. So that's the end of level two. And this third one is when you complete level one, it will go to level two. You see? So you complete level one and you go to level two and then you go to your end screens. So you could probably quickly imagine what can happen now. You can chain together quite a lot of levels and that's why we call it the game storyboard effectively because it is a sequence of what you can do throughout your whole game not just a level your whole game and so you can see it in one quick go um, just a couple of other things i'd like to show you notice the little mini map that lets you just move around you can also move around with the mouse you've got highlighters so you can organize chunks of screens very quickly and it's entirely up to you how you organize all this um, so I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun figuring out the nice, cleanest ways to lay out your game. And of course, not forgetting, we need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it, let's call it um, the Zombie, the Zombie Adventure. There you go. So save and Zombie Adventure. We're going to have a few improvements to the UI. Don't worry about this. This is not finalised, but the functionality is there in the background. And the, the, the whole culmination of everything that you do in Game Guru Max is for this button here, Save Standalone Game. So yes, we'll save our project. And now we can do Save Standalone. Remember, it's called Zombie Adventure. So we save this out, like so. Now we're done. We can close down Game Guru Max. We can go to My Games folder, which is created when you install Game Guru Max. Zombie Adventure, that's the one I've just created. We can run it. So in this Friday's build, you will be able to save standalone, but not just save any old standalone, you'll be able to save um, your whole game. So you can design your splash screens, your menus, start, instructions, quit. So we've got instructions. Your mission is to stay alive and run away from zombies. Uh, and the big start button to get you started in the game. I won't go into this, there's not really, it's just a mountain side. Um, but I just wanted to show you that now you can actually create, finally create your standalone executables. I'll just launch back into the software in case there's any questions relating to um, the storyboard or the screen editor. Um, but you'll see that this button now makes sense. So you're in the particular level and this big arrow back to game project is where you go back to your current project 
and in this case I'm going to open up again my zombie adventure and you see it remembers all of my settings and where the boxes are and of course as you build your game this will grow and you can um, move around this virtual sort of grid paper and make it as big as you want and you can see the potential for the future as well as we have more different kinds of screens that you can intersect perhaps even videos you can play back lots of cool potential things in the future but for the early access it will be pretty much this we've already set up these screens for you the most flexibility will be in creating lots and lots of levels for your game and then saving it out so I'm just checking the clock Doing pretty good, 11 minutes, which leaves four minutes for questions. I'm now going to switch over to the chat, see if there's anything related to what I've demonstrated today, but absolutely happy to answer any questions that you have about Game Guru Max, life, the universe, or everything. <laughs> and everything. Looking for question marks, though, because that makes it much easier for me to find your question. Okay, uh, did I miss one? No, here we go. Ready for the big reveal, exclamation mark. This is the great reveal, and there's going to be a few more great reveals before the, this month is out. Okay, um, yeah, found the first question. This is from Nomad Soul. How long until Max can be considered a triple A game engine? Mm, that's, a, that's subjective, isn't it? Um, who's to decide what triple A actually means? But if you mean when is it going to get to the point where 150 programmers are working on it 75 artists costing 115 million dollars and taking three years to make a game probably never um, if you want to create triple a games i would still recommend the the top end prosumer tools that the professionals use and get yourself 50 or 100 friends to help you make your triple-a game it is a serious business creating big triple-a modern games it isn't the 8-bit days where one person can knock out an entire game put it on a cassette tape and sell it at wh smith's those days are gone um, so yeah i am absolutely evading that question because i don't really know what triple-a main uh, means these days. It's certainly gone on to the stratosphere as far as what I personally consider AAA, but maybe people, dif different people have different ideas for that one. Next question, what? The whole of Texas? I can't really answer that. Maybe it needs more context. Um, here's a question from Zogo33. Will there be a feature to export character creator characters in FBX OBJ format, for example, to create animations outside the software? Mm, great question. There will not be an option to export uh, character creators in anything other than the Game Guru Max format, so you can use them in Game Guru Max. However, we are going to provide you templates, file templates, in a format that you can load into your favorite animation slash 3D modeling tool so you can create your own animation. So don't worry about that. The reason we've not already released them is we want to finalize them and get them good for our engine first. And once we know that they do everything they need to do, then we can give you those final files and we're not going to mess you about by changing them halfway through. So bear with us until we're happy with, say, specifically our AI system, and then we will have the template files that we can give to you, and then, of course, you can take the rig that we're then happy with and animate it any way you see fit. And as you've seen in, say, the model importer, um, you can actually do load, sorry, append animation. So you can then take that animation and append it onto... Uh, and a character creator character or your own character and of course add your animations very easily questions questions who's got the questions oh we have to go down a little bit but here is from painter 179 will there be a system of translation between levels with the preservation of inventory in translation if i collect some things in level one will i still have them in level two well the, sh the quick answer is yes thing is though there isn't really a system for you to pick anything up um, what we're starting with with the early access is a shooter genre so predominantly the only things that will be preserved are the ones that you would associate with shooter games health um, any special protections you might have weapons ammo stuff like that you know when we come to do say the, uh, the RPG genre then you will have an inventory and collect lots of things and carry them around with you but for shooter it's much simpler to preserve a smaller subset of data as you move from level to level 
not necessarily level 1 to 2 to 3, you can change that around and move from any level to any other level. That's the beauty of the storyboard system. So, who's got another question for Little Uli? Um, that's another question, that's another question, la 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 la. Here's one from Matthew Clark. Hello, hello, can we have third lesson camera options or any camera adjustment options like Fox, external camera or internal? Can I really translate that? Um, third lesson camera, I think we'll translate that as third person perspective. We are not doing third person perspective, we're going to focus on first person single player games, initially for shooter, then RPG and then puzzle elements. That's the order in which we're going to do things. If you're holding your breath for third person, you might probably go blue in the head. <laughs> so please don't hold your breath for that stuff. Um, okay, another question from Zogo33. Will it be possible to have code panels where you need to put code to open something in the same category of switch and buttons but logic for a code panel? Yeah, that's a nice little gadget. Some sort of um, pad with numbers one through zero and then you can go ding 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 like one two three four and then that switch activates the door that then opens great idea we don't have it um there's no plans to put that into the final set of assets but if we do find ourselves with some wiggle room and our artist has been freed up for more important things i think that's a good idea but certainly it's not on my particular roadmap i don't have that asset um, but yeah it is a good idea and i do see a lot of those in shooter games so you won't have to wait too long to see something like that. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. Looking for a question straight underneath. This is from The Sleeping Warrior. How will the title screen loading screen easy work with the VR context? Well, we've been pretty savvy about that. Anything that you render onto a 2D screen, um, you, you ask yourself, well, how does that work in VR? Works very similar. We just project a rectangle in front of you and then put all of those 2D elements on that large 2D rectangle so you can actually still see pretty much what you see on the monitor but you see it in VR and instead of a mouse pointer you'd use the controller which has a laser coming out of it and it highlights say the buttons or the things that you want to action like a button or a, a switch or something like that so it works in a very similar way we don't have to re-engineer the whole thing for VR however there will down the road 2022 be options for us to do a better, more polished job, specifically for VR, where we take advantage of the UI of VR rather than just slap the old 2D stuff into a VR quad. Um, but yeah, we'll certainly be able to have the functionality that you have, but yeah, there's always room for improvement. Just checking the clock, we have pushed past the 15 minute mark, we're now at number 18, which means I'm three minutes over my budget. Also, do not want to get over that 20 minute mark, if I can help it. So I'm going to pick two questions from people who've not asked me a question yet. And that just happens to be right there from Duke229. Since GG Classic is basically not updated anymore, tumbleweed, in terms of graphical features or anything else, Yes, I know that bug fixing may happen. May happen indeed. We have set a commitment to do four updates a year on Game Guru Classic. We take every bug that you report on the issues board and we fix them all. I think that's pretty okay. Um, but you're right, we're not focusing all of our dev and graphics and performance and stuff effort on Game Guru Classic. Why? Oh, let me think. Oh, yeah, that's it, because we're working on Game Guru Max. We want Game Guru Max to be great, and so in order to do that, we're going to put all our best energies into Game Guru Max, so we end up with a great game maker. I think most people would agree that particular stance. But please let me know in the comments below, as they say on YouTube, if you disagree with my personal opinion. Looking for the next question. Um, uh, D. Amon also hasn't asked a question before, and this will be the last one of today's broadcast. When will pressing right click to ADS correctly zoom in currently zoom out is uh, zoom out and is no seating can i read that question again with a different brain uh, when will pressing right click to ads correctly zoom in i presume we're talking about say a weapon so when you right click it sort of zooms in um ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah that's really dependent on the weapon that you select. Currently the weapons that come out of the box, the pistol and the rifle and the fists and the grenade, none of those actually require extreme zooming in. The rifle, if you actually press the right mouse button on the rifle, it will zoom in a little bit. Just if you notice that, it will actually zoom in. And so we do have control of that. 
but it really depends on the weapon you choose. For example, in the future, we'll do, say, a sniper rifle, which will zoom in quite a lot. Um, but that's really down to the weapons and how they're designed. It's not a limitation of the engine. So, yeah, keep an eye out for new weapons with new extreme levels of zoom. Hopefully that was the correct answer to the translated question. The rest of your questions, I'm not going to ignore them. I am, however, going to answer them in the Game Guru forums, along with a recording of this broadcast. So I've just gone over the 20-minute mark. Again, I apologize. For anyone who's lucky enough to, for, to be a pre-order user, you get to play with everything I've been demonstrating today on Friday, along with some other lovely little toys. I won't tell you what those are today. I'm going to leave that as a nice little surprise for you on Friday. So I'll leave that one up in the air, but I will certainly make a mention of them in the change log. When you install the new update, you'll actually see all these cool things I'm talking about. I'm not going to demonstrate them today because I really wanted to be focused on the game project storyboard, which I think is pretty cool enough for this week's broadcast. Next week, there's going to be another really cool thing that I want to show off, but I'm going to, again, I'm going to keep that a secret. So if you're interested in that next cool thing, please join me next Wednesday at 4 p.m. GMT this time. We are leaving daylight savings time and shooting straight into regular GMT. So from next week, it will be Wednesday, 4 p.m. GMT, where you get to hear my sultry tones one more time as I reveal more about the internal development strife of Game Guru Max. So if you want to learn more, join me next week, and I'll be happy to present some new cool things to you. So until next week, thanks for listening, and goodbye.